Uh, sorry about the delay, but it's on now, so it's okay. Well, we come together, of course, as we all know, to extend our love for Janet Meister and the beautiful love and goodness and dynamism which he offered to the world. There was a sweetness and a vitality about her that brings all of us together. Saddened that she has gone from life, but yet we were so fortunate to know a person of her wonderful manner, and we pray that she rest in peace. I will begin by reading a section of Torah, of traditional literature, some of which you have in your handouts, and we can, on some of the prayers, read them together. But the first prayer I'd like to read is the Asayanai, it's Psalm 121, which bids us to lift our eyes up to the mountains. It represents our acknowledgement that we certainly may have a faith that our loved ones who have gone from life have ascended to God's waiting arms. And some people do indeed believe that, that there is a soul that ascends to God's waiting arms. Uh, some people who do not believe it still find meaning in this particular psalm, which is the first one on the left as you open your paper, to Psalm 121. And it begins with the word, Esayanai el hecharim, I lift up my eyes unto the mountains. From where does my help come? I lift my eyes up to the mountains. Of course, it could represent the ascension of an individual to life eternal. But it also represents those of us who knew her in this time, during our lives, and we look up to the top of the mountain as if we look up to those individuals for whom we have great respect. That that too is an important teaching. And Janet was a person who really deserved to be respected because she beheld herself with such dignity and such fineness, such a love of life and of being involved in life. How could we not but look up to her and for the wonderful principles with which she lived her life? And so if you'd like, on the first page, you can join me in the Hebrew and then we can respond in the English, which is in the middle of the page. Esai enai el hecharim, meayin yavo ezri, Ezri me im Adonai ose shemaim va'aretz, al yiten lamot raglecha yanum shomrecha, hine lo yanun velo yishan shomer Yisrael. Adonai shomrecha, Adonai tzilcha ayad minecha, yom am hashemesh lo yachake v'yareach balayla. Adonai yishmor mi kol ra, yishmor et nafshecha, Adonai yishmor tzeitecha, Uvoecha meata vi ad olam. As we pray responsively, I lift up my eyes to the mountains from what is the source of my help? God will not let your foot give way. Behold, the guardian of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. The sun shall not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. God will guard you from all harm. God will protect your being. As we continue now with the 23rd Psalm at the bottom of the left side. Eternal one, you are my shepherd. I shall not want. 
You make me lie down in green pastures. You lead me beside still waters. You restore my soul. You guide me in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. With rod and staff, you comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup is overflowing. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There is a, a section from the 31st chapter of Proverbs, which is often read at funerals for dynamic women. Uh, it's not to uh, indicate that all women, of course, are equal in every way. A Janet Joyce Meister was an extraordinary person. And in many ways, this reading is reflective of the beauty which abounded in her heart and the dynamic manner with which she lived her life. A woman of valor who can find for her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, and he hath no lack of gain, for she doeth him and all of her family good throughout her life. She giveth food to her household and a portion to her maidens. She stretch her, stretch her hand out toward those who are in need. Yea, she reacheth forth her hand to the needy. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laugheth at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the law of kindness is upon her tongue. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children, her grandchildren, her great-grandchild, rise up and call her blessed. Her husband always did as well, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done valiantly, but thou, Janet, excellest them all. For grace is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman who reveres all that is noble she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her work praise her in the gates. She deserved by virtue of the wonderful attributes she beheld and how she acted, great respect and honor. We're going to be calling members of family now to be able to share some memories before we make the conclusions of the service. And Jacob, I think we're going to call upon you first. Our condolences to you and your entire dear family. But we're honored to have you come and speak. My mother always lived life to its fullest. And she enjoyed every day. And, but why wouldn't she? She had a fabulous and blessed life in so many ways. She had an absolutely adoring husband <clears throat> who she loved so dearly. And my parents were the perfect balance. Uh, Janet was <clears throat> the yin for Maury's yang. She had so many cherished friends and relatives, we can't even count some who are with us today and many watching on the World Wide Web. And unfortunately, many others who have passed. She and her only sister, my Aunt Marcia, 
were best friends. They are best friends. There were two sisters who had 11 children. They brought our two families together like one. We traveled together and remain close to this day. Janet traveled the world with her dear Maury and our entire family. <clears throat> we had many fabulous family vacations and memories. Having the whole family together was so important to my mother. And when we were younger, we went to Florida regularly with our cousins, and we also went as a family to Israel and Aruba and London, and we were together as a family. We were always together at the holidays, and we got older as we got older, and our family grew to 17, and we moved to different places. My parents continued to regularly take the entire family on amazing family vacations and cruises to places like Alaska and Israel and the Mediterranean and the Baltic, but the important thing is we were always together. And after my father died, my mother did, didn't let that tradition end. Um, Janet insisted on bringing the entire family together at every opportunity to her home in Florida, on family, a family cruise to north, the North Atlantic, and even a trip for the girls to Vietnam. Now, my parents had a little bit of a difference in how they liked to travel and a different idea of what travel was about. Janet could do the Louvre or the Hermitage in under an hour, and that was fine. Then it was time to shop. Maury took his time, and Janet would say, and I heard this many times, Maury, hurry up. There's not going to be a test at the end. <laughs> she loved a good party, regardless of the occasion, and threw many herself. She, she'd hit the dance floor with my father, or without him, and she just loved to dance, and she loved to be at a party with friends and family. Even in her later years, after she moved into the Chudnow Senior Community where she lived, she loved our weekly family dinners um, and never missed the opportunity to throw a party. She threw a New Year's party. She had a fabulous 88th birthday party and a 90th birthday party. Many of, many of you were here, were there. And this year, 2022, even though we needed to remind her that it was her 93rd birthday coming up, um, that was in February. She said, and her birthday's in April, she said really boldly and directed us, it's my birthday and I want to have a party. You, I'll pay, you make it happen. And we obliged, of course, and in April, she had her 93rd birthday party with a room full of loving family. And it was a wonderful time for everyone. Janet had a huge smile the whole night she might not have remembered why we were all gathered, but she knew she was celebrating with her family and having a great time, and that made her so happy. And of course, she has a family who she loved and who loves her dearly. She imbued all of us with her passion for life and, of course, her feisty and sometimes unorthodox character. She taught all of us to be rugged individuals and stand up for what we believe. The Meister House was always a welcoming place, an open house where anyone was invited to dinner. Janet was never shy about sharing her opinions and sometimes was a bit unorthodox in the way she shared those opinions. You may know my mother was a rugged sports fan and especially had a burning passion for her beloved Wisconsin teams, the Badgers, the Brewers, and of course the Packers. And when a season wasn't going well for one of her teams, my mother knew the reason why, and she knew how to fix it. <laughs> As a child, my father was one of the Milwaukee Brewers team doctors, um, and as a family, we attended many games, and we had the doctor's seats right behind the, the Brewer's dugout. Um, and at least once during the game, my father would generally visit the locker room to check on the players. 
and when the Brewers were having a bad game or a season, Janet always had instructions for Maury to deliver to the team management while he was in the locker room. It went something like this, like, you tell Del Crandall that, that you gotta get rid of that player, or let Harvey Keen know that he needs players who can actually hit a ball, or tell George Bamberger to pull that lousy pitcher, he's awful. Janet always had an opinion and she was not shy about sharing. To be sure, there were periods of adversity in, our, in her life and in our family. But in the face of adversity, my mom always knew how to make fantastic lemonade. She was an eternal optimist, loved life on her own terms, had a passion and drive for life that couldn't be defeated and never let anything get in her path. My mother always lived life to its fullest and she enjoyed every day. She had a blessed life, and we were blessed to have her as our mother. She's been an inspiration for all of us, and we will miss her forever. Good, goodbye, Mom. Please have, give Dad a hug. And now, um, my niece and nephew, Adam, and Allie, who were B'nai Mitzvahed right up here on this Bema, um, 2006, are gonna give a talk to Grandma, it is an honor to be one of your six grandchildren. Actually, now one of seven. The life lessons that you have taught us are visible in every aspect of our beings. Most grandparents teach their grandkids to speak their minds, but ours taught us to speak our minds, and if they don't listen, speak louder. Now by louder, I do mean physically louder. We'd be out to dinner and our parents would be talking about their favorite topic, politics. Mm -hmm. And if pastor buyers were not listening to the conversation, they would think a fight might break out. But in reality, everyone was mostly agreeing. We just don't have what people would call inside voices. Granted, there was that one time a fight did break out at dinner at a Chinese restaurant where some plates were thrown, just not by our family. Some of us still get PTSD going into P.F. Chang's. <laughs> but all joking aside, what I'm taking away is, if you're going to speak your mind, speak passionately, and make sure your voice is heard. Grandma Janet had a wonderful sense of humor. I mean, when you have four children under five, you kind of have to have a sense of humor. Otherwise, you're going to go a little loopy. And from the stories we've heard, it wasn't always easy. While we can't speak of what it was like with all the Meisters and Schnalls together under one roof in Florida, we did get to spend our childhood winter vacations together in Boca. One year, when they completed a full remodel of their living room, they brought brand new chairs and a gorgeous new tile flooring. As soon as we walked in the door, Grandma told us the new house rules. No sitting on the chairs, no bare feet in the house. While we followed those rules to the letter, we decided to have a little fun, as kids do. On one of our many trips to the flea market, we found ourselves at the joke shop where we found fake nail polish that looked like it spilled over. We coated that fake nail polish with nail, real nail polish to give it the smell and gloss that's needed to fool our eagle-eyed grandmother. The prank worked to perfection. Grandma Janet screaming, you kids, get out of here before realizing that the nail polish was fake and hysterically laughing. While we have a Meshuggah family, we are laughing and having fun through it all. Another thing Grandma Janet taught us was generosity. Whether it was a need or a want, 
Grandma Janet could provide it, she would. That lesson she taught us could have ended there, and it would have been great. If your family needs or wants something, and you can provide it, do it. But the beautiful thing is it didn't. While Grandma was certainly charitable, it wasn't the giving of money that speaks to me. What speaks to me is when I would have a friend over, and she would invite him to dinner, or even to come with us to Florida for a vacation. The lesson here is giving your time to those you love and they love has a profound ripple effect. We love you, Grandma, and we'll never forget the life lessons you instilled in us. My cousins and I were very spoiled grandkids. Now when you think of a spoiled grandkid, you might think of grandparents buying us crazy toys, the newest electronics, or fancy clothes. However, we were all spoiled with something much harder for kids to understand, time. Growing up, our grandparents took us on extravagant cruises all around the world. They also made sure we all got together for winter breaks in Boca Raton and Thanksgivings in Milwaukee. They taught us how to knit and how to play golf. And they were always the first people we called when something good or exciting happened because they loved to talk to us on the phone even when they weren't physically nearby. Even though my cousins and I all lived in different states growing up, we were together a lot. My grandparents made us feel like we were close together and it's those memories that we all hold near. One of the many winter breaks we all spent in Florida, our grandma Janet decided to teach us how to knit. We went to the store, picked out our yarn, and came home and started knitting. Quickly, our grandma realized this might not have been the best idea because she had quite the perfectionist tendencies. She stayed up late into the night fixing all our mistakes from the day so that we could resume classes again in the morning. <laughs> it was again on one of our cruises that we would learn all about each other's quirks and habits. Luckily for us, our grandma had a lot of quirks. It was a joke that no matter where we were in the world, we could always find our Grandma Janet in the closest jewelry store. Now, while this was a joke, it was also very true. Whenever she went missing, we would search for the nearest jewelry store. One of us would walk into the store worried, and she would say, oh, good, you're here. Do you like these earrings? <laughs> it is through all of this time we spent together with our cousins, aunts, uncles, and of course, our Grandma Janet and Grandpa Maury that we were taught the great lesson, greatest lesson, one that some people still never learn, the importance of not only spending time together, but spending quality time together. Grandma, you continue to teach us that lesson even after Grandpa passed away, always preaching that he left you too early and you still had more time you wanted to spend with him. We love you, Grandma, and we will continue to live our lives to the fullest, not only because we saw you live that way yourself, but because you taught us how to live that way as well. Is there anyone else that had wanted to speak? No? Well, you were eloquent at your bar and bat mitzvah, still today and more so. It's meant uh, a great deal to know your dear family uh, for all of these years here at Congregation Shalom and within the community. I thought Janet was an extraordinary person and so too many individuals who have expressed that. Here follows a, a reading that she taught. I've read this a few times, but I thought it was particularly significant when thinking about Janet Joyce Meister. This reading is entitled, To You, My Child, My Grandchild my great-grandchild and my family. If there could be only one thing in life for me to teach you, I would teach you to love, to respect others so that you'll always, too, be able to find respect in yourself. 
to learn the value of giving so that when the time comes when someone is in need, you'll have accustomed yourself to giving. To act in a manner with which you would wish to be treated and to be proud of yourself. To laugh and smile and enjoy life as much as you possibly can in order to bring joy into the world in which we live. To have faith in others. To be understanding. To stand tall in this world and learn how to depend upon yourself. To only take from this earth what you truly need so that there will be enough for others. To not depend on money or material things for happiness, but rather to learn to appreciate the people who love you. The simple beauty that God gave to you. To find peace and security within yourself. To you, my children and grandchildren, I hope I had taught all of these things. For these things are love. And I thought for Janet, a particularly meaningful, true, and significant statement. Jewish tradition also teaches give of yourself, give as much as you can. There's never too much love to give. And Janet Joyce Meister was a woman who gave of herself with such warmth in such a dynamic manner and so beautifully in a most glowing manner she lived her life. She was a vibrant and elegant person who offered love to family and great respect to friends and vitality for 93 years of glorious living. She lived a life of gracious refinement and energy and dignity. Janet Meister bore a sense of beauty and dignity. She maintained a home which was so refined and so well-ordered, so imbued with the beauty of her making, every item within her home was placed in a manner that met her elegant specifications. This was important for her. Her family all knew how important it was for her. And those items were situated in the right place for it matched the dignity with which it inhabited her elegant style and her choice and her dignity. Everything within that home was reflective of that dignity and that style. And Jewish tradition teaches that a home is not just a house. A home is tailored with the love of family and the accruements which glorify the home and the experiences shared from trips taken, how it embellishes a home as a temple. As a matter of fact, the Talmud teaches that a home is not just a house. It is referred to in the Hebrew as a mikdash me'at, which means a miniature sanctuary the home in which we love, particularly if it is filled with good teachings and with love, becomes synonymous with a temple where sanctity and honesty and integrity is observed. For Jana created a sanctuary of love and refinement within her home, not only because she had the capacity to bestow beauty and elegance within her home. But Janet was also able to provide for Maury, her children, her grandchildren, and her great-grandchild, Eli. And they met each other and talked and communicated. And she rejoiced in this beautiful source of brightness and love to share life with such a dear husband 
and precious and beloved children and grandchildren and newly great-grandchild. A loving sister of Marcia. And she was so proud to be your sister, so proud to be an auntie and a gloriously refined person to so many friends within her community. So many relatives and friends that Janet could claim because she was an honorable, fun, special, precious person. Now, Janet and Maury Meister were positive and bright and upbeat and deeply caring people. They were caring to the core, and that was why they were so beloved and they were a beautiful couple together, and they were beautiful on the inside and on the outside. Maury Meister enrolled in medical school at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where he studied to be an internist. I don't know if everyone knows that. But the United States military needed a dermatologist in Korea. And in 1951, Maury was sent to the Far East with the Air Force to serve as a dermatologist and he served with distinction, proudly so. And we appreciate the help he offered, and particularly the need that he was able to exhibit for the United States military and for our country. But he returned home in 1953, and he met his dear and precious wife, Janet. A dermatologist is concerned with the issues of the skin. And of course, Maury served as a revered dermatologist. Yet deep beneath the skin did Maury Meister find the precious soul of Janet Rosenberg. She would become the caring, refined, and elegant inner soul that Maury and her beautiful family were able to call as a blessing. It is what is beneath the skin where Maury found a dynamic, loving soul which inhabited the very essence of Janet Joyce Meister and the wonderful family from which she hailed. We've talked about this before, but we remember her father, your grandpa, your great-grandpa, who was bar mitzvah here at Congregation Shalom, not in this sanctuary, but over in the other sanctuary. He was so cute and so fun, and he spoke so eloquently about his family. You just had to melt when he became a bar mitzvah at age 83. Why 83? Because normally children at 13 are bar bat mitzvah. Well, once he reached 70, he determined he would await 13 more years to become a bar mitzvah here at congregation when he was 83 years old. Beneath Maury's inner essence was a soul as well and how significant was that which he found in the whole of his family. Beneath Maury's inner essence was his soul as well as that which beat love for his wife and the beautiful loving family which they were so proud. Janet and Maury offered to each other a love which was so soulful and so beautiful their love emanated from their hearts to each other. Whether in Milwaukee or in Florida, did they offer love and joy to each other, their precious family, and to so many friends. They could derive, der derive joy from feeding birds, 
to the harmony of couples clubs, to taking magnificent cruises with family. And Maury and Janet were married for 54 years. And that is a magnificent achievement. But it's also mystical, and this is how I will conclude. 54 is a mystical number in Jewish tradition. It's three times 18. You know, 18 is chai, to live life. They lived a life that was so bountiful and beautiful. Three times 18 is 54. And with those children and grandchildren, and now great-grandchild, will Janet and Maury somehow, in some way, if you are allowing yourself to believe, will join each other once again. To believe that somehow, we in Jewish tradition believe that dear ones can take each other's hand, so to speak, and that they're together again. How do we know that? We can never know that. But what is interesting and fascinating vis-a-vis -vis Jewish mysticism is that Maury passed on in the year 2008. Highly respected and glorified professionally and personally in 2008. And now we've arrived at the year 2022. And that is 14 years since his passing to this moment when our dear Janet passed away. 14 years. You know, 14 is one of the mystical numbers of Jewish tradition. The 10th letter of the Hebrew alphabet is a yud, and the fourth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is a dalet. You place those two together, and it creates the word yad, yud and dalad. A yad is a hand. Fourteen in Jewish tradition is a yad, a hand. Fourteen years after Mori passes into life eternal, can we believe that he has reached out his hand to his beautiful wife? to take her together as one into life eternal. Janet was an elegant, dignified, spectacular person and loved the life which she lived. But now we look into the future and perhaps indeed they'll be holding hands again with the Almighty and at peace, and a day which today began as cloudy is now warmed by the sun that is shining in the sanctuary. Maybe that's a, a lesson or a sign that the two of them holding hands will continue to shine on, watch down, and love each of you in the same manner they had always. We pray that she rest in peace, and that they rest in peace together as this wonderful family from generation to generation offers her ongoing respect, love, and devotion. May they rest in peace together as we say, Amen. And now we rise for the El Mole Rachamim prayer in which we pray that Janet Meister, you'll hear her Hebrew name in the chant, Shana Gittel. Shana means beautiful, and Gittel means good. And that was her Hebrew name. Hehel mole rachamim, shochein bamro mihim. Haham se menucha nuchonata kat kan fea shachina linishmat. Shena gittel, bat avraham fel, 
ubela bahasia shehalakala olama baal harakami mitzor bitzora kayimet nishmata adonai hunachalata ha vetanuach bashalom ishkavaha vino mahar amen o god Full of compassion, thou who dwellest on high, grant perfect rest unto the soul of Janet Joyce Meister, who has departed from this world. Lord of mercy, bring her into thy presence. Let her soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. Be thou her possession, and may she always rest in peace as we say, Amen. And now we conclude by turning in your pamphlets to the Kaddish. We'll recite it here today and we'll recite it also at the uh, cemetery as we join in this sacred prayer which has been recited for more than 2,000 years. Yit Kadal v'yit Kadash me Rabbah Bialma divra chirute, viamlich malchute, bechaye hon uv yome hon uv chaye de ho bet Yisrael, ba agola uvisman kari viemru, amen. Yehe shme raba mevorach le olam ulome omaya. Yit barach, viishtabach, viit po ar, viit romam, viit na se. Vayit adar, vayit ale, vayit halal, shmei dekudisha berichu. Le'ela minka birchata v'shirata. Tush bechata v'nechemata. Da'amiran bialma v'imru amen. Yehe shlama raba min shemaya. V'chaim aleinu v'alka Yisrael v'imru amen. O se shalom bim ramav, hu ya ase shalom, aleinu vial ko Yisrael, vimru amen. May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved, as we say, amen. Friends, services will continue at Spring Hill Cemetery. Today we will be in the mausoleum for those of you joining us out there, 166 South Holly Court. We will not be going in a funeral procession. For those of you who need printed instructions to the cemetery, we have them located on a map outside the sanctuary. Today, following entombment, from 4 to 8 p.m., the family will return here to Congregation Shalom to greet friends. As well as Wednesday from 5 to 9.30 p.m. at 7316 North Seneca Road in Fox Point. For those of you who need directions or the times for Shiva, they are printed on a map outside the sanctuary as well as on our website, blankgoodmanfunerals.com. At this time, we ask that everyone remain standing until the casket has left the sanctuary. Paul Bears, please come forward. Thank you. 